All right, hi everybody. Um, my name is Will Kent, and I want to welcome you to uh, this webinar uh, that is intended to get everyone excited for Wikidatacon, which is happening this weekend, and to celebrate Wikidata's birthday, which is also coming up this weekend, uh, and also just to um, kind of share some really exciting updates uh, in the Wikidata community um, from our panelists, who I'll introduce in just a second. But before we get to that, I just want to say that this is um, brought to you by Wiki Education uh, and uh, just a couple things about our programs. Uh, we have a couple. Uh, the first is Peaching with Wikipedia. Feel free to follow this URL to learn more, and I'll add this to the chat in a little bit. Um, the, our panelists have taken my class, um, which you can uh, learn more about at learn.wikiedu.org. Uh, and if you're an institution and want to partner with us, we represent an institution, uh, please check out this URL partner at wikiedu.org uh, so that we can work with you to uh, make Wikipedia and Wikidata even better. So like I said, I'll share those links with you. Um, but let's get started because there's a lot to cover today. Um, we're going to be talking about how cultural institutions use Wikidata to share their data with the world. Uh, and we're joined by my three lovely panelists. Thanks for joining uh, us. Thank, thank you for joining us today. Um, so we've got uh, Jackie uh, Rubashkin, who is the um, metadata technician for uh, the National Archives uh, in the US. Uh, and she'll be talking about some personal projects she's working on. We're also joined by Michelle uh, Van Lachot from Wikimedia Netherlands. Uh, and she is a project coordinator there, and she'll be talking about some of the work that she's been doing. And William Bluer is joining us from the Met in New York City, uh, and he will also be talking about some cool projects that he's been working on. So welcome to all of you. Thanks for taking the time to join us, and thanks for being willing to share a little bit about your Wikidata experiences. Um, what I'll do is uh, I've got a bunch of questions I'm curious to ask you about. Uh, and then I'd love to hear from all of you. And uh, for those of you attending, there'll be plenty of time to ask questions at the end. Uh, so feel free to hold on to those questions or drop them in the chat. I'm sure um, you'll have questions as, as our panelists uh, share about their experiences, um, but I'll definitely make sure that uh, we, can, we can share your questions and answers at the very end of the session too. So to get started, uh, to the three of you, I'm kind of curious uh, if you would tell us about a Wikidata project that you're currently working on. Um, Jackie, would you mind going first? I would love to go first. So Thanks. one of the things that I've been working on um, for almost a year now is podcasts because I'm a podcast nerd. So um, I was introduced to Wikidata from Joe Serra and he said, oh yeah, you, you know, you can start looking around. I started searching for podcasts and seeing what was out there. Um, and the first thing I did was see if there were like LGBTQ podcasts out there. And I noticed that there was, you know, between like 30 and 50 when I did a query. So then I started individually adding, you know, other LGBTQ uh, podcasts. And then I ran into a wall of, I was having a hard time finding other English language ones. And then uh, Joe came up with the idea of doing it for episodic uh, content via the RSS feed. And many questions later, I started doing it. So my Wikidata project is specifically creating episode pages um, more from open refine and quick statements so it's more automated but i've created over 4,000 uh pages for uh individual episodes since the, the start of the year that is awesome thanks for that overview jackie um michelle would you give us a little background about what you've been working on lately yeah, sure. Um, as you said in your introduction, I'm a project coordinator at uh, Wikimedia Netherlands, which means that we basically support uh, Wikimedia volunteers who are um, uh, working on, on Wikipedia, and we're also supporting GLAM organizations. So my work is a bit more in the organizational uh, field. So what I've been trying to do, one of the projects we are working on, it's called Wiki Goes Caribbean. It's about... Um, adding information about the, um, the uh, former Dutch Caribbean to uh, Wikipedia, Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons. And this is a long running project. It's been around since 2016. And um, uh, the, our volunteers have made very long lists of um, uh, requested articles for this project. I think there are uh, over 590 articles on that list, but it's very difficult to uh, maintain um, that list because you have to manually switch out the blue 
uh, links for the red links and you can't really see if an article is already available in another language. So what I'm uh, working on now is uh, sort of um, putting all those uh, articles into um, uh, Wikidata with OpenRefine so we can start um, selecting uh, articles by um, island or by topic or by um, uh, by um, sort of uh, if there's an English or, or a German or a Papiamento version uh, available. Uh, and it's sort of a side project, but that's what I'm working on now. And I hope to be importing it um, to uh, Wikidata in the next couple of weeks or so. I've been uh, sort of cleaning everything and just uh, working on that. So that's my project. That's great. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, it's very exciting. I hope all the uploading goes well. Yeah, I hope so too. All right. And and William, could you give us a little background about the project that you've been working on? Yeah. Um, so uh, I was also in, in Will's class and um, starting to learn about Wikipedia. Oh, sorry, Wikidata. And um, I began thinking about these uh, indexes that we'd recently created for artists from various groups. So we have these four indexes in particular, one for African-American artists, one for Asian-American and Pacific Islander artists, one of indigenous and Native American artists, and one of Latinx and Hispanic American artists. Um, and we have been accumulating a lot of information about the people on these lists. And these lists are several hundred uh, artists long. Some of them are over a thousand artists. Um, and so what we did uh, was eventually we ran um, an open refine reconciliation against Wikidata to see how many of these artists um, had IDs in Wikidata. And then for those that didn't, um, through Will's class, I I was able to learn about quick statements and how we might be able to generate quick statements um, based off of the information we already had in these indexes to uh, relatively quickly <laughs> create um, quick statements for all the artists that, that lacked um, Wiki data IDs. Um, so uh, during that class, I started the project and uh, was able to get through the African-American artists index. Um, and then over the summer, we had a very industrious uh, museum intern uh, who came in and was able to help um, generate quick statements based off of um, our indexes and our spreadsheets. Um, for the other three indexes. So we ended up creating uh, Wikidata IDs for over 800 artists from these indexes. Um, and now all of the artists that are currently in the indexes um, have Wikidata IDs, though these indexes are constantly being expanded and added to. Um, so we now have, once once they get updated, we have a workflow in place to generate the quick statements necessary for those that don't already have Wikidata IDs. So that's a very brief summation of the, of the project um, that I'm happy to go into more depth later or something, but that's basic gist. I love it. Thanks, William. So these are all very uh, unique and different projects from each other, but they're also very compelling in their own ways. I'm kind of curious if you could um, all kind of expand on why you've selected Wikidata, like why are you choosing Wikidata? And it can be for personal reasons. It can be for organizational reasons. It can be whatever, whatever, why ever you chose it. I'm just kind of curious why you're spending all this time on Wikidata. Feel free to reform uh, answer. <laughs> I could go, I guess. Is that okay? All right. Um, well, in in libraries, we're constantly um, creating data that we want to uh, share with as many people as possible. But oftentimes, it's just in our library systems. 
Um, and their library systems are really good at sharing uh, that information with other library systems, but they're all sort of, you know, enclosed in library systems. So it's very hard to discover, say, a name authority record um, by using Google. So you have to have to actually go to Library of Congress to say find find something like that. So I've been curious about um, how finding bridges between all the data we're creating in libraries and um, the web online um, places where people could discover this stuff more easily. And so um, in our work now, uh, in our authority work where we're creating LC name authorities, we now have this fun new field, the O24 field. I'll, I'll be very brief about this because I know this is not a, a a pan, uh, you know, supposed to be about cataloging, but we, we're allowed to link to um, other vocabularies like Vioff, um, Getty's uh, union list of artist names, as well as Wikidata. So Wikidata is starting to creep into library records. And I sort of wanted to, um, you know, get some experience working with it myself and and connecting some of the the material that's in our collection or the data in our collection um, to Wikidata. So that's that's why I got interested. Awesome. Jackie or Michelle? Yeah, I can hop in if that's all right. Um, why Wikidata? Uh, once I started using Wikidata and just searching, I was like, wow, the system is really built out but it's also a lot like Legos where like pieces might look familiar, but you can kind of just like actually attach them and it works. And I was shocked because I'm used to either cataloging systems or digital asset management systems that are so rigid that trying to do anything other than what it was originally designed for X amount of years ago or X amount of months ago is really difficult. And all of a sudden I was like, wow, this actually makes sense for how my brain works. And if I actually search, there are answers. Other people are having problems with it. I was also incredibly enamored by um, being able to cite, to say like, actually this data is, is legitimate, not just because I decry it as so and I read it on the internet, it's actually, hey, here's like some substantial sourcing materials. So for me, that's like one of the really, really strong parts of Wikidata is that like you can make it what you want it to be, as well as it has like a really strong community where like when you have questions, people have A, already answered the questions, or B, you put a post on a discussion page and then you get like five answers. And to me, it's just, um, it's really robust. So like, not only is it able to like come in and actually see like, oh, I have an effect and then I can see how people are adding information to pages I've created or pages, you know, I'm watching. Um, to me, it's just like, why not use Wikidata? It's so much more user-friendly than other systems I've used and it works. And not just because people say it works. It's just like some of the external identifiers are just, it's so nice seeing like not a messy URL and like authority data. It's so shocking when it does work too. So for me, it's just like, the more I got into Wikidata, it was like, okay, uh, here's another layer. It was a lot like an onion where I just like kept going. I'm like, how much is there? And you know, I have not yet reached the center. I don't think it's possible to. Maybe Will has because he's the, the expert. But yeah, I just think it's it offers so much. And I really also think that like the Sparkle query options, both with how you can visualize and export tables, is so highly functional. Because it's not just, you know, like having to run a script and thinking, okay, I maybe got the fields I needed. It actually just is functional and it works from the get-go. So I think that there's just so much built-in work where I really, um, it's fun working on Wikidata. Again, it's just like assembling and building and seeing stuff grow. That's great. And Michelle? Yeah, Jackie, I completely agree with you. It's very fun to work on Wikidata. When I um, first started editing uh, Wikidata, I remember that it was so much easier to do than, than editing uh, Wikipedia and, and um, uh, writing a, a complete article, translating an article, just, uh, well, um, adding information and adding facts to Wikidata was yeah, such a, a fun thing to do. And um, that was a while ago, and I've been um, sort of 
on and off uh, editing um, Wikidata since, but since I took the course with Will, um, uh, I am also uh, really um, thinking that Wiki Wikidata is just um, the solution for sort of all kinds of problems we encounter um, with the uh, cultural organizations we are uh, working with, for example, um, we had this um, partner contacting us and they wanted to start a project to um, translate their uh, data about certain uh, colonial um, um, data hubs they are working on, um, which is something you don't really have to do if you um, add the information to Wikidata because it's already translated. And also for me, I'm working on uh, this project that's part uh, in the Dutch Caribbean where they uh, speak Papiamento. If you have a um, Wikidata-driven project page, which is some something I also uh, want to uh, experiment with, you don't have to translate that. And it's just um, every time there's something... Um, um well a problem or some some sort of um uh issue um with working uh, with uh wikimedia then wikidata is sort of almost always uh the answer it's sort of like the wikidata hammer since and everything becomes a, a, a wikidata nail i don't know if i'm yeah well so that's uh why we could we could add i think why why not i love it hammers nails onions a lot of good metaphors for wiki data right now um I, a related question i have for all of you is um did it require any convincing um to use wiki data like for your institution for your organization did you have to persuade anybody um or was it just like a, a, a please use wiki data for this I can uh, say something about that. Yeah. Um, I think we are, because uh, we are uh, uh, the Dutch chapter uh, for the Wikimedia movement, and um, we've been around since, I don't even know, I've been with uh, Wikimedia Netherlands since 2018, but we've always been very focused on uh, Wikipedia. So for, for uh, us as an organization, I think, it was kind of a shift to see uh, what uh, wiki wikidata would be doing and i think that also for the um, organizations that are contacting us uh, that want to work uh, with wikipedia wikipedia still is sort of the flagship because it's the most uh, visible but um i think these last couple of years um because um wikidata is um expanding and because uh, things are um, the possibilities are um, increasing and uh, we have uh, open refine and quick statements and some really good tools to actually um, start adding to uh, Wikidata. I think uh, Wikidata becomes more and more the uh, starting point uh, for us to um, um, work with and to promote to um, the organizations we are uh, working with. So it's really sort of a shift um in focus yeah that makes sense any other convincing required from any other panelists or was it a slam dunk from the start um yeah i think that there there definitely is some convincing um at least at my institution just because um the it's not immediately clear uh, how we can sort of practical, practically implement a lot of the stuff that is a lot of the data in Wikidata. Um, so while we are generating, um, you know, wiki data IDs for artists on Wikidata, it's really hard to integrate that into most of our library systems um, currently. So. I think that because uh, the quick statement work that we started doing was um, using the indexes that we have available uh, online, um, it was sort of, we're able to sell it as, you know, we're connecting people to this resource um, through 
citing it on Wikidata, and that could perhaps elevate, you know, make people more aware of these of these um, resources that exist. But it's still, um, I think, other projects or, or different projects that are more just uh, that have less of an explicit tie to to our own library are harder to to sell just because at this point it's still hard to uh to integrate wikidata into so many um different library systems whether it's our our catalog or our digital collections or, or things like that but hopefully in the next few years um it becomes easier to to do that and then then it will be a slam dunk and there will be no need to even have a conversation about it because we'll be so enmeshed in the work that we're doing yeah, I'm excited for that day. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, so the next, oh, Jackie, sorry. Did you? Okay. No, I'm sorry. No worries. Um, so the next question I have is, is kind of related to that, um, which is Wikidata is a complicated space. There's a lot to it. A lot of the tools are user generated. A lot of the projects that you spoke about at the top of the hour all kind of have different components and, and different workflows and different ways forward. So where do you go to learn about Wikidata? How do you kind of flesh out um, these workflows? How do you train other people? Um, what are some of like the ways that you ensure that things keep moving forward in the work that you're doing? And anyone feel free to unmute and take it away. I can hop in here if you like. Um, so yeah, Wikidata has like some of the most amazing tools. And the nice thing is, is that they're not just updated. They have like really, really amazing documentation. Um, I've sold several people on OpenRefine. Uh, just, it works so well in the documentation is some of the best documentation that it's incredible <laughs> that it's free in that, you know, it works in browser. Like just, there's so many positives to using it. And I think it's also just like made me a more like well-rounded employee and like, information professional just of like how I think about things as well as just like when I think about streamlining and like being able to cut out steps um it's really just integral and then I can bring it into other projects and things like that um sometimes it's just like oh wow I found this one thing and then you tell somebody else or somebody else says oh, I knew that but like did you know I could also do this um, so I just think the open refine is so amazing that even if you don't export your data to Wikidata, I think it's just, uh, a marvel. Um, I can't, you know, speak highly of it enough. Um, and I think quick statements is just when you're looking to break in and you don't want to manually fill everything out, I think quick statements is just the thing to do. Or if you just have like a small batch update, you know, upload where it's just like, Hey, I have 10 pages. I want to add this one thing to it's just shockingly easy once you get to know it but the barrier to entry is already like pretty manageable so I think that's like one of the things is like Wikidata you unlock one thing you then you get the next and the next and these tools just make it um easier to do more with less almost um just because once you start rolling you're you're good to go that's so great uh, Michelle or William any recommendations for keeping things moving on Wikidata or learning new things? Yeah, I think um, I totally agree with what Jackie just said again about OpenRefine and everything. I also um, uh, forward people who are um, um, being trained by us to and uh, OpenRefine documentation because it's really, really good. But um, what I also really like about um, uh, Wikidata are the Telegram groups where you can just ask any question you um, might uh, come upon and um, there are no uh, stupid questions there. It's just always, um, Jackie also mentioned that there's always somebody or multiple persons um answering very quickly and and uh, giving you good good advice so you can keep working so that's also i think a great um way to learn more and to get help if you need it um yeah i'd say uh, an, uh another good resource um will not to embarrass you is is you um, you, your class was fantastic and you've been very, very open and available, uh, for all 
of mine and I think many others questions um, as we go about doing this work. Uh, I know that for the quick statement stuff that that um, we set up, I um, copied a spreadsheet that you'd created doing some some landmark building work. Um, and you know that is another good way <laughs> looking at what other people have done and copying it. Um, or you know, working from it and creating your own your own um, things that work for you. And and the documentation on Wikipedia, uh, sorry, Wikidata, um, is is fantastic as well. It's really really helpful. Uh, they've got tons of pages on on things like quick statements or or other tools um, that that you might want to experiment with. Um, but the 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 class was really where. I got so many, uh, so many resources that I can, I, you know, I've saved all my notes and there's just dozens of links to things that um, I feel like I can always go back and, and reference. So yeah, great way to learn about it. Thanks, William. I am always good for some links and uh, anyone feel free to reach out to me if you have more questions about it. Happy to um, talk your ear off. Um, always more to learn is the other thing. It's a very humbling experience in, in my opinion. Um, all right. So switching gears a little bit and feel free to, to, you know, run in any direction you want with this next question, but I'm kind of curious, what are some of your favorite reasons for using Wikidata? And it can pertain to your project. It can pertain to like other systems you use and Wikidata is different. It can just be something that you adore, but I, I'm wondering what you're passionate about, what you're excited about uh, in using Wikidata. Uh, I'll, I'll go, I'll start. Um, so I would say, you know, coming from, you, you just got a little, little taste of, um, the cataloging world. When I mentioned the 024 field, uh, I like that there are no 024 fields and all the other, um, myriad mark fields that one has to learn as a cataloger. I mean, you know, I'm, I like I like Mark, don't get me wrong, but um, it's there's a very, very sort of steep learning curve there and using Wikidata and creating a record um, in it is just so much more intuitive and easier to do. Um, and so, you know, coming from a cataloging background, that was just really refreshing. Um, I also like, you know, when I am creating a name authority record that has a Wikidata, um, ID, but doesn't have an LC authority record. When I'm done creating the LC authority record, I can just plop in that ID into the Wikidata record and boom, it's updated. I don't know. It's just <laughs> the ease of use is is fantastic. Um, and not to mention the, the capacity to do things like batch loading, quick statements. Um, can't do anything like create 800... Um, name authority records um, in, in Library of Congress, you have to do them one by one. So being able to do things in batches is uh, great. Yeah, I completely second what William is saying. It just, the ease of use. And also um, I know it's really frustrating when there's constraint flags, exclamation, like all, there are warnings that actually divert you in the right direction. Um, versus some other things are just going to give you like a red stop sign and you really don't know why you're getting it or how to get around it. If you need to go all the way back to start versus um, Wikidata is constantly trying to give you the resources to make it more right. Um, I think that's really excellent. Also, you know, people are other users on Wikidata are friendly. So for people who are really put off by like edit wars like that's not a thing like I just don't run into it like people are really like what's your rationale and there's a lot more of this collaboration to kind of get where you'd like to be or where the most right is and I think that is something that's really um charming and I think you know one thing I do really like is like you know the change when you can see each incremental change on a page I think that's just Something um, like as an archivist, it's just really nice to be able to kind of like 
say like, oh, no one touched this for a year, but now there's like five new changes. I wonder if it's because there's a publication or things like that. Um, so for curious people, it's just like always something to come back to and add to. Um, like for my project, there's um, a user who's going back and like adding certain fields I didn't even know exist, um, probably because they're not, you know, from the American domain um, for podcasts that I did. And it's like, that's so cool. And I, I added them, you know, last December. So there's just something really wonderful about people being able to go back and do data and not even just like, oh, they're scratching it out and doing a strike through. No, they're adding to it. So like the corpus of data is constantly growing and it's going in like the right direction versus something that's like really static and siloed. Um, I can maybe also uh, say a little bit about uh, what I um, like most about Wikidata. Um, as a project coordinator, we uh, we organize a lot of um, events. We do uh, editathons and um, um, tech storms, things like that. And uh, it's always um, the preparations are always a bit um, um, uh, well. There are a lot of work and a bit time consuming. Uh, to make these project pages on uh, Wikipedia, you make uh, uh, wanted article lists, you try to uh, run some queries in, in PetScan, and then you have a, a Wikipedia page. Um, and after the event is over, um, it just sits there on Wikipedia and it doesn't um, uh, live on or anything. But if you um, do that in Wikidata, then you can just um, keep um, looking at the same um, data from a different perspective, uh, reusing it, and also um, uh, add to uh, Wikidata the things you are working on as a project coordinator instead of them sitting on Wikipedia and nobody um, benefiting from it. So that's what I really um, like about it. There are really fun responses. Um, thank you all for taking the time to kind of expand on your Wikidata passions. I love how everyone's was a little bit different. Um, all right, uh, moving along, this this next question has to do with kind of looking into the future because um, you're all working on these projects. It sounds like they're all um, progressing uh, at you know different paces, but still in the right direction. Um, and I'm kind of curious if like money was no object and you had all the time in the world, what's like a, a dream project you would love to do on Wikidata or something that you know you want to do next? I can maybe say something about that. Yeah, please. Um, well, we, um, what we would really like to, or what I would really like to do is to get every um, glam um, that is working with us or that has been working with us uh, a wiki data driven uh, project page so um, because normally the uh, project pages or the, the organizational pages on wikipedia they uh, well you need to update them and they look very um, sometimes they look really outdated um, but um, you can also um, do this uh, with uh, a wiki wiki data driven info boxes and um the it just looks so much better it's almost like a sort of wikipedia uh, website um but driven by information that's in uh, wikidata which makes makes it really easy to um uh, how do you say that upkeep or to keep up um so that uh, is something that that if we had no um time or money constraints, but that would be great to be able to offer to the GLAM um, organizations uh, working um, with us. And you also you have these plugins for your your metrics and uh, um, the, uh, uh, how many times your images and data is viewed and everything. It's, uh, it's just great, yeah. I love that idea, that'd be really fun. Um, I can hop in. Um, if money wasn't an object, I think I'd hope that time wasn't an object either. There's never enough time because once you start editing one thing, you're like, I can just do it and then time's passed. Um, I would love to be able to do more for like LGBTQ content. Um, a lot of the podcasts that I've worked with are not this like top 10 you would see in your podcast app. 
and I did that um, on purpose because there's already folks who are doing like the top 10 podcast. Um, but I'd be really interested to continue to make that data and make the creators pages and things like that just because um, I think it should be out there. And I think it would be positive to have just like more of that content out there. Um, I'm also just would love to see how the, um, the information that's on Wikidata um, like interacts with the rest of the web. Like when Google starts to magically have their like boxes of description, like I would love for there to be some like more transparency to be like, hey, your wiki data did that versus like, oh, this was scraped off of another website. But I think if time was no object, it would, and money was no object, I think it would definitely be really excellent to be able to focus on um, creators and content that um, often just get overlooked or buried in the search results. I think that would be um, really nice. And then like connect it back to some of the more like mainstream pages, whether they're like category or lists on Wikipedia, but just like trying to make that content um, more readily available and just like help them and like get higher on the um, the lists, like the search list. Um, so I think there's just like, there's never enough time in Wikidata or as a like a content consumer. So like to try and elevate um, some of that, I think would be uh, a really good use of time and money. Love that idea too. I want you to have all the time and the money in the world. Yeah, and uh, I guess for me, you know, the the project that I just worked on uh, were these four particular indexes, and there were, you know, maybe probably fewer than four thousand names, and we ended up creating about eight hundred records. I can't even imagine what would that would be if we were to scale that out to say. <laughs> our whole catalog or something like that, you know? So that sort of scale um, would be something I'd be interested in, but also as I've sort of hinted at a few times, the <clears throat> ability for library catalogs to begin to use some of um, the Wikidata information would be incredible. Uh, we currently, have uh, URIs in our in our authorized headings that go to um, LC records, but there's no reason why those couldn't one day be expanded to Wikidata if library systems were capable of <clears throat> meaningfully doing something with it. So if you're hovering over, you know, the the author's name and you you can see a little biographical snippet or something taken from Wikidata. Um, just sort of looking out in the future for opportunities to uh, to integrate <laughs> all the data we've got with all the data you've got. And um, I think it could be really useful for people, so. That'd be really cool too. I love all these ideas. Um, I, hope, I hope we all get time to work on them at some point. Um, so uh, this next question, I know Wikidata is really great uh, and it allows uh, us to do a lot of things that we can't do in other systems, but it's also not perfect. And I'm curious uh, if there was one thing you could change about Wikidata, what would you change and why? And it can be anything. It can be the experience, the community, where buttons are. I'm just kind of curious, what's one thing you'd want to improve about it? Have I stumped you? No, I think, can... oh yeah, oh. no, Jackie, go ahead. Yeah, you go. No, um, one thing I guess I would say, um, Wikidata is so good at having like alternate names and things like that, that um, but I'd like to see that sometimes um, with properties because sometimes there's really, really similar properties or they're reciprocal properties that um, unless you read into the discussion, it's really hard to know what the most right thing is. Um, but I think that's more of like a me user issue than it is like a system issue because it also shows like the flexibility and freedom of Wikidata. Um, I think one thing would just be um, being able to like query, Will actually showed us something in the property pages in the class that I'll have to like bug him to send everybody where when you went to the property page, 
you could go to the property proposal and see the query of like the use and things like that. And I was like, why didn't I know this six months ago? Um, and I was like, that was singularly one of the best things I learned in that class because I use it all the time. And when people are starting on Wikidata and don't know how to Sparkle query yet, I'm like, hey, if you find something that you want to know where it's used or what it's used, and you don't know how to do the search. I walked them specifically through the steps that like Will taught me. I was like, that's dynamite just like so easy. But again, I had been like a um, pretty active user for almost like half a year before I got that like really excellent key to the kingdom. Um, probably if I had taken more of like the like wiki learn classes, I would have been more astute and known about it. Um, but for people like me who just like start tapping away, I uh, didn't know. Did I learn a lot about Sparkle queries before then? Yes. Am I continuing to learn a lot about Sparkle queries? Also, yes. But I think just like for your like level 100 people, like some of those really small things are really helpful, especially when thinking about how a user would stay active if they are or are not challenged, or they just like come across something that like stumps them, or they're like just simply interested in that. I think making some of those things a little bit more visible would be very helpful for folks. Um, I think um, I I I um, I think I would also um, like it if there was more um, data in Wikidata, even more data than there is now. Because what I um, find um, for people who are starting out with with Wikidata and adding information and having to uh, create a new item after a new item after a new item because they want to add something can be a bit uh, frustrating sometimes for um for for newbies starting to add it and i also think that um if if you are um that there's also still some uh, work to be done on wikidata from a perspective of knowledge equity i'm um, experiencing this um um with the work we are doing with the uh, wiki goes caribbean uh, project but i'm sure there's more uh, sort of stuff that still needs to be Put in there so imperfectly perfect yeah maybe something like that yes and william did you have something too um i feel like i i'm not yet expert enough in it to really have too many uh too many critiques i mean the thing i i feel maybe I get the most frustrated with is um, queries, but that's mostly user error. I'm not blaming it on on um, Wikidata. I think I'm just not that good at building queries yet. And so, you know, that's really just about learning how to do it better. So yeah, if that were completely intuitive and there was zero learning curve, that would be great. But uh, I don't, I don't imagine that that's, uh, you know, possible. So yeah, these are all really good critiques. And I think uh, it's all clear that we love Wikidata so much. And if you love something, then I think you can critique it. And that's a good thing. Um, I would love if there was more consistency with data modeling. I never know if something should be a qualifier or property. And it's really hard to find that out. But anyway, um, I like Joe's comment in uh, the chat. Imperfectly perfect is a nice, nice way to phrase it. Um, so uh, everyone attending, it's almost your time to shine. I'm about to open things up to questions, but I've got one more question for all the panelists. So audience members, please start thinking of your questions. And for these panelists here, my question for you is what's one thing you've done on Wikidata that you're most proud of? Uh, and it can either be like something you created, something you worked on, a change you made, uh, a personal breakthrough. Just kind of curious what... Uh, What's like one Wikidata story where you're like, ah, that felt good. Uh I'll I'll go. This is this is very this is very minor, but um because I think, you know, truthfully, the the project and the all those those ideas you created are the thing I'm most proud of. But one thing that um I'm happy came of this was sort of just the realization of uh, how easy it is to do 
small changes. So one thing we've integrated as uh, the group of four catalogers in my library who do name authority work is that when you when you um, create a record for someone who has a Wikidata um, uh, ID already, you can just, once you've created the LC name authority for them, you add that to that um, Wikidata record. And while that is super minor seeming, um, having something built into an existing workflow that, um, that connects to this in any way and makes a, a small, but I think somewhat meaningful contribution to it uh, feels important because, you know, you're helping to sync up um, these two really big vocabularies that, uh, that should be synced up, so. Well, yeah. that's great, well, Jackie. Um, one thing I'm really proud of is like having a functional data model because when I first embarked on this, I felt um, a lot of, like it was like throwing spaghetti on the wall. Um, and I think one thing that I definitely like learned in your course and I've learned through talking about Wikidata with anybody is like, you're gonna start and then you're gonna realize you have to make a lot of changes and that's cool. It's just, you didn't know you had to make the changes in the beginning. So I think now um, my workflow is much, 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 much more streamlined quick. And it's so much now um, like a routine, it's just, easier and it's less time consuming and um, the data is still as rich and I feel like that data modeling experience obviously um, it's not always going to be in wiki data but I think that that type of experience um, without having to add like a new study of a different ology um, it's just cool to get that like functional knowledge I like certainly would I, I don't know another system where I could like confidently be like oh yeah I made a data model I made this project I built on it and things like that where I was just like no that's like pretty cool that like it works somebody else can emulate it somebody else can you know run with it um I just don't know like other systems where that would be the case so I definitely think that's like something I'm proud of is that um the work I'm doing here can be replicated and won't be siloed yeah I love that oh Michelle um, yeah, I was also um, what what I'm proud of, but more maybe what I had fun doing was after I finished the course, I I did this sort of ten minutes a day Wikidata uh, challenge for myself to keep um, um, to keep going, um, and I just added added it items um, about books I read or uh, about some some um, person who was in the news and. Um, every day something different or sometimes um, uh, one item a couple of days in a row and sometimes way longer than two minutes sometimes um, f f hours went, went by um, and before I stopped and I thought that it was very very um, low-key but also rewarding way to just um, add uh, information to um, a Wikidata because you can practically add something to every item you come across and just make it better. So that's, um, yeah, that's my two cents. I appreciate that. I love that too. And I also love how a seven minute, 10 minute Wikidata challenge can turn into a three hour Wikidata challenge where you forget to eat and get really thirsty and the afternoon flies by. Um, awesome. Thank you for your responses. That's great. Um, so at this point, uh, to all of our wonderful attendees, do you have any questions for our panelists? We've covered a lot of ground. We've talked a lot about projects. We've talked about things we love, things we've changed, things we've accomplished. Uh, if you have a question, feel free to drop it in the chat. Ooh. Yeah, so Jamie uh, is looking forward to the panel discussion at Wikicon North America. Um, so William and I and some other folks are speaking. Oh, Jackie too are speaking there. Sorry. Um, so if uh, if you're able to attend, please do. And if you're unable to attend, sorry. Next time. All right. Siobhan has a question. Um, there was documentation for Open Refine. Uh, where? Do you find Wikidata specific open refined documentation? And I think this is for everybody. I 
I can hop in. I guess my question would be, are you looking for like how to attach for reconciling or uploading? A lot of times I just go to the open refine support document and we'll just do like a really vague search, whether it's just for like, yeah, just whether it's for like reconciliation. Um, something I've learned really well is like, I know less than I think I even know when it comes to some of this stuff. So if you just like go one level above what you're trying to find, usually it's great. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, I could have done this like this. I think especially for like um, some of the reconciliation stuff or even after you do a reconciliation, there's still like a lot of things you can do to manipulate your data. So just using keywords in the open refine search, I think is really um, one of the ways that I do it. And then I usually take a screenshot because uh, then I can save it for later and I'll reuse it. Um, but that's that's what I would do other than Googling open refine Wikidata. And then if it's like a property question or things like that, to put it that way. All right, great. Thanks for that, Jackie. Um, let's see, there's another question, which is one of my favorite ways to edit Wikidata is during group events like edit-a-thons. Have any panelists, have any of you ever hosted an edit-a-thon? And if so, are there any tips um, for thinking about hosting an edit-a-thon? Um, we've hosted a few edit-a-thons at the Met. Um both in the library and uh, outside the library. There was a there was an on-site um, Wikipedian, I guess for for back, lack of a better word, um, who who ran most of them. Um, and they've been on a whole range of of themes. Um, but um, to be honest, I feel like the edit a thons um, you come in and you have like a, a vision for what you want people to be editing and then people show up and they sort of uh, they just work on what they're interested in so which isn't you know a bad thing um, but maybe don't believe that your vision will be other people's vision and and be content with the idea that getting more people editing and engaged with with um, the platforms is might be the the goal in itself more than more than um, a particular type of thing you want to see edited but maybe that's just my own experience of that no i i agree uh, with you william we also um see edit the tones more as a sort of outreach um, event, but I do think that if we were to um, actually do a Wikidata edit-a-thon, I think we, um, well, we haven't specifically run Wikidata edit-a-thons, but we have um, uh, edit-a-thons which are focused on Wikipedia where Wikidata slides in, and I think um, uh, two tools that are very useful for um, people who are totally new to um, Wikidata to work with our uh, Cradle and um, um, the one with the form. I forgot the name, but um, Will, you're sure going to be able to um, add that. But I think those tools make it very easy for people who don't know Wikidata at all to um, start working with it from, you know, really, uh, really, Fast. Oh, Tabernacle. That's the one. Yeah. Tabernacle's great. Same with um, Cradle. These are some great recommendations for edit-a-thons. I do see Kalila has a quick question all about representing um, PDFs in different languages as a Wikidata item. And I think that's a great way to go, um, if, especially if it's like a reference or if you want to yeah, represent a publication on Wikidata, that's, that's what I would do. All right, cool. Um, well, I, I want to, before we run out of time, just plug a couple more Wikidata events that are happening this week uh, in the lead up to Wikidata's birthday, which again is this weekend. Um, so feel free to check out this page. Uh, it, this is where we're kind of aggregating events happening globally. 
Um, and ours is listed here. I know there's a big one in New York coming up this weekend. So if you're in the New York City area, feel free to attend. And then there's some all around the world. So if you're hosting one yourself or know of some, feel free to add those. And then don't forget to go to Wikidaticon, um, which is also happening uh, the 28th and 29th. Um, it is in Taiwan. So if you're unable to attend in person, please attend virtually. I think that'll be fantastic. Uh, and then also looking ahead, uh, Data Modeling Days is coming up, uh, hosted by Wikimedia Deutschland, and that's November 30th through December 2nd. Uh, this link that I just dropped in the chat um, has all the relevant information, and this is a new event that they're running. Um, so if you're interested in participating and sharing and presenting, um, feel free to uh, attend that too. Oh, I'm getting, it looks like my links might not be going out. So I will I will share all these in a different way. Um, but I can at least share my screen so you can see these right now. Um, so this is the, the data modeling days uh, page. Feel free to attend here. Um, and if you have questions about it, you can always feel free to, to let me know. Um, thanks, William. And the last thing I want to share is a little project that I've been working on that uses Wikidata a ton and kind of speaks to what uh, Jackie and Michelle and, and William have been doing. Uh, and if you've been doing any work with Listeria, uh, this is this is something that's kind of cool. Um, I'm wondering if one of my panelists can share this out to everybody since I don't think, oh, wait, I can just do this. There we go. Okay. Um, I've been building these equity lists uh, mostly for improving Wikipedia pages. Uh, this is uh, lovingly stolen from uh, Women in Red. Uh, so if you're interested in improving um, or creating Wikipedia pages uh, based on sexual orientation of people, um, this Wikidata query um, queries all other language versions of Wikipedia that are not English uh, to point to red links. And again, this is all based on Wikidata data. Um, so it's encouraging people to write all of these articles uh, for all of these individuals. And it's just a project I've been working on. So feel free to check out these pages. And I've got ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender, uh, nationality, medical conditions, uh, just to elevate the, the profiles of some, some individuals that um, don't yet have Wikipedia pages in English. So uh, feel free to check that out. Uh, and with that, uh, let me just give our uh, panelists a, a big round of applause, everyone else, um, please. Uh, give them a round of applause too. Thank you so much for attending um, our webinar today. This is fantastic. Uh, one, one last big thank you to William and Michelle and Jackie for attending and please stay in touch. Feel free to reach out to any of us if you have questions uh, and thanks again. This is fantastic. I appreciate it, everyone. See ya. <laughs>